Then there's an issue of political unrest. I'm, I'm very familiar with what happened in New York, Philadelphia, particularly in, in Boston. But in 1765, the Commons House of Assembly of South Carolina, which as one Tory newspaper editor said, had a very exaggerated opinion of itself. Um, nothing's changed much with the General Assembly. <laughs> But in 1765, they passed a series of more than 20 resolutions, including one that said, in taxing ourselves and making laws for our own internal government, we can by no means allow our provincial legislature to be subordinate to any legislative power on earth. That's treason. They're saying, Parliament, you have no right to legislate for us. In 1774, the first Virginia Convention elects its delegates to the Continental Congress. So does South Carolina, which also appoints a general committee to overlook revolutionary activities. The association boycotting British goods is in place throughout the colonies. And there's that famous cartoon in one of the English journals that pictures the ladies of Edenton, North Carolina, and their boycott of tea. That used to be a staple in American history textbook, that cartoon of the ladies and their tea party. It's not there anymore. It's not there anymore. Um, and then you have other political re resolutions on the eve of, uh, before 1776. The residents of Botetourt, Virginia, resolved that we cannot part with our liberty but with our lives. Our duty to God, our country, and our posterity all forbid it. And in May 1775, the residents of Mecklenburg County, North Carolina, passed what has been called the Mecklenburg Declaration of Independence, which said that the citizens of the county should be a free and independent people. So there's, there are plenty of examples that are out there that can be used either with or perhaps instead of what necessarily happened in Philadelphia or in, in Boston. 